So let's suppose that we have a uniform beam with mass of 30 kilograms that we attach to a hinge resting on the wall. That hinge acts as the axis of rotation of the beam. So we have the following wall that runs along the y-axis. We have the beam that acts along the x-axis. Let's suppose we attach the beam to the wall using a massless rope shown here and the rope makes an angle of 30 degrees with respect to our beam with respect to the x-axis so this angle between the rope and the beam is 30 degrees next we hang a sign that has a mass of 35 kilograms knowing that information and the fact that our beam remains in static equilibrium, we want to calculate what the tension in the massless rope is. Well, let's begin by drawing the force diagram for our beam. So here we have the following beam, the distance from the hinge, from the axis of rotation to the end of the beam is three meters. Now, because the object has uniform mass, that means the center of mass is right in the middle, a distance of 1.5 meters from the axis of rotation. So we have three forces acting on our beam. We have the force of gravity acting on the beam at the center of mass at this position given by force center of mass. We have the force of gravity which acts on the sign which in turn acts through this rope on the beam and this is shown by the force of gravity and we also have the tension in the rope which acts at an angle theta with respect to our beam and this angle theta is 30 degrees now knowing this let's begin recall that because our beam is in static equilibrium well that simply implies that the net torque acting on the beam is zero the sum of the torques acting on the beam is equal to zero. So because we have three forces, each force has a corresponding torque. Each force creates a corresponding torque. So we choose going counterclockwise to be positive and clockwise to be negative. So torque created by the tension force minus torque created by the gravitational force that acts at the center of mass minus torque created by the gravitational force that acts on the sign which in turn acts on the beam. So we have the following sum is equal to zero. Now we can rearrange our equation and bring these negative terms to the right side and we find that the torque tension is equal to the sum of these two torques created by these two forces. Now Recall, by definition, torque is equal to force times lever arm. Now, the lever arm for this force is 1.5 meters. The lever arm for these two forces is 3 meters. So, let's begin by replacing T tension or our tau tension, torque tension, with the force acting times the sine of the angle theta because we're looking for the Y component force. We're looking for the y component force, so that means sine of the angle theta multiplied by this tension force multiplied by the lever arm. So let's represent the lever arm with the symbol D. And that equals to, well, the force CM minus half the lever arm, so D divided by 2 plus force G multiplied by the lever arm D. So now we solve for FT and we see that force the tension in our rope, Ft, is equal to MGD divided by 2 plus capital MGD, where lowercase m is the mass of the beam and uppercase m is the mass of the sine. G is simply our gravitational constant and D is our lever arm. Now notice, Ds appear on top and bottom, so we can cross them out to get the following result. The magnitude of the tension in the rope is equal to mg plus mg divided by sine theta, where this term is divided by 2. So note that these m's are not the same. This m is 30 kilograms, while the capital M is 35 kilograms. So we multiply both by 9.8, we divide this quantity by 2, we take the sum, and we divide by sine 30, or 0 0.5, 
and we get 980 newtons is the tension in our rope. In other words, in order for our object, the beam, to be in static equilibrium, the tension in our rope should be 980 newtons. This way, the side will not move and the beam will also not move.